Hi, my name is Sydney White. I'm a student here at Brigham University, Idaho. And I want to talk to you today about something I feel that all of us face, and it's active listening. I feel like in our conversations and our, the way that we communicate with people, we forget that a conversation is between two people, and in order to communicate, you need to actually hear them. There's one of my favorite quotes, is that most people do not listen with the intent to understand. Most people listen with the intent to reply. And that's by Stephen R. Covey. And I think that's so true because I know whenever I'm in conversations with people, I'm always like, okay, when's my break to get in? When's the next time I'm going to talk? When's, you know, and that's something that's selfish because I want to be heard. But the true way to be heard is by paying attention to what's important. So I want to do an exercise with you really quick. Um, so I want to ask you guys, how good are you at listening? How perceptive are you? And this is one of the video. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? My question is, are we paying attention only to what's important to us, or are we actually listening? So let's talk about listening. We listen to what's important to us. Listening is when we transfer information, and we convert it to something that makes meaning to us. And so um, there are several statistics when I was researching this project where we only intake and listen to about 25% of what's going on. That's not even half. That's a quarter of a half. That's a quarter. That's a no. <laughs> but we only intake about half, a quarter of what we listen to. And so, what are we missing? What are we not perceiving? And what kind of things are we listening to? So, we sort out information based on how it relates to us. And so, I don't know about you guys, but I respond pretty well to my name. I respond pretty well when I am listening to a conversation or I'm in a busy room and I hear my name that I'm going to listen because it's important to me. Actually, I just, they, I read a study where the frequency of the name, actually, it relates to us on a scale of one to 10. 10 being the things that we ignore, and then one being the things that we pay most attention to. That is like 0.05. <laughs> it is there. Um, that's the thing that we, that we listen to the most. As well as opinions. I know that whenever I'm listening to somebody speak or talk in a presentation, or whenever I'm sitting in a classroom, I'm more perceptive if somebody agrees with my opinion and is on my frequency of beliefs. And I also think that, for me, my, I'm more ready to listen if there's food involved or if there's a reward system. Or more likely to listen if there's, some, if there's a reason for it. Or I'm going to listen so I can get this, or I'm going to do this. You know, ever since we were little kids, we'll always listen to mom because then we won't get in trouble. <laughs> Something that I think that we also do is that we, don't, we are not self-aware. So if you really want to be a good listener, you have to become self-aware of how you listen to other people. And so we think about it. So for a second, I want to take 25 seconds just to listen to the sounds of the room. Okay, so what kind of sounds would we hear? Things that we actually naturally filter out. We can hear the heater. Do you want to talk? Oh, I thought you were asking. Yes, what kind of things that we heard? The projector. The projector? Yeah. Okay, is there anything else? I heard clicking in my desk. Yeah. Shuffling. What? Tapping. Tapping. There's all these different noises that we normally filter out. In fact, we do that all the time. When we're in noisy rooms, we can filter out complete things. It's one of the most incredible things about our minds that we do that automatically. So your brain's actually doing the right thing by filtering things out, but if you really want to become a better listener, you need to be more observant of the noises around you. So how do we show that we're listening? Another way, that, another problem that we have is that when we conversate with somebody, oftentimes we're distracted by technology or by our phones or by different, you know, people talking or we're looking around. So how can we show that we are communicating with somebody? So communication is shown through several non-communicators. So for example, smell. 
Uh, so it's a super weird way to communicate. But when you get dressed, when you got ready this morning, you took a shower, you brushed your hair, you washed your hair, you sh shampooed, you used conditioner, you used lotion, you used perfume, you used deodorant, all the different things. Before you even left the house this morning, you've used probably about 14 different kinds of scent. When you brushed your teeth, everything else. So isn't that crazy? You're already trying to communicate that you're a presentable person. Another way is through touch. Whenever we break that touch barrier, it shows that you're showing closeness. And I think that's super important, that when you show that you're listening, you're showing that you care about that person. Your physical appearance and body language. So obviously, I'm dressed nice today. If I was dressed in my PJs, you probably wouldn't take me as seriously. The way that we dress and that we act for different situations actually determine the way that people accept us and look at us. And body language. So when you're talking with somebody, and by talking, I mean listening, <laughs> You are leaned forward with your arms open because that means that you're accepting of them. And you aren't looking around, you are paying attention to them. These tricks make such a big difference in our lives. So we have to make the conscious decision to see what's important. So we have to, when we're listening to people, acknowledge them and make the effort. So if you can't listen to somebody at that, first, at that time, you can tell them, hey, I'm super busy with something right now, but I can talk to you in about 10 minutes after I'm done with this assignment or when I'm done with this subject or task that I'm doing. So acknowledge that you can make that effort. Another thing is that you can summarize information. One of my biggest problems is that my wonderful roommates will come home from school and they'll be like, this is what's happening, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, and I'll completely disregard what they said, because I heard it, but I didn't register it. And then I'll be like, so then this happened, and I completely ignore them. And it's not on purpose, it's something that I just do, because I come from a big, gigantic, loud family. And um, I don't manage to say, oh wow, it sounds like you had a crazy day. Just that one sentence shows them that I cared, and that I know what they were saying, and then I can proceed on. But it's so important that when we listen to people, we summarize it. So you can say things like, so what you're saying is this, or it's crazy, you must feel this way, or how do you feel about that? In fact, one of the ways that we can do it is by validating with questions. So when you validate with questions, like, wow, what did she say then? Or it must have been really hard, or something like that, you ask questions to make them understand that you really are listening. And I know it's hard, and it takes a lot of effort. And this is an entirely different way of thinking about listening but it's going to change your life. So let's go back to that question, or that quote, most people do not listen with the intent to understand, most people listen to you with the intent to reply. And I think this is my biggest problem because when people come to me for advice, I just want to tell them what to do. I just want to tell them what's right, and I think that I'm right, but in reality, we can't fix people. Um, we've been promised that if we have a clear mind and just listen, the answer will come to us about what we should say after the person is done. So we should refrain from fixing. Do people do not talk to you so that you can fix their problems. They talk to you so that you can listen. They are smart enough to solve their own problems. And the best way you can help them is to help them talk about it. So I have a friend that whenever I talk to, the, talk to him, he feels that it's necessary to fix me. So he tells me all of my flaws when I've had a bad day. And I just it's not effective. It just makes me feel not good. And, but I have a friend of mine that listens to everything I say and they help me become better. And it's through active listening that I'm able to feel good about my problems and feel like I can fix things. So this is a quick thing. It's just I'll just show There's you a little pressure, you know. And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me. And I can just feel it. Like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless and I don't know if it's going to stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most, is that I don't know if it's ever going to stop. Yeah. You do have a nail in your head. It's not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing... You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. See, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail. See, you're I, not listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. I think so many times I'm in that situation where I just want to do it. But I promise that the right way to help people, the right way to fix things, is to listen. So when we can do that, your relationships will improve, not only with 
people that you're in relationships with, but with your family members listening, and having that active listening will help them so much. You'll learn more through observing and listening. I think that so many times I know everything, but I don't, and we don't. Um, the people around you will feel more valued, so people will be more anxious and excited to talk to you. And then you'll be less stupid. I know for me that when I learn from other people's mistakes or through what they're going through, I become so much more wise. So this is what happens if you have to listen. And I challenge you in your next conversation to just listen. Thank you so much.